already a week has passed a week has passed of great Lent so let us struggle to maintain the enthusiasm with which we entered this holy time let us reflect again on what it is we're doing what our goal is and why why we are afflicting our bodies this way we we who have so often rejected the commandments of God through our bodies let us now afflict the very body through which we have transgressed God's commands we remember that these 40 days if we take out the Sundays they are approximately a tithe a, a tenth of the year we offer to God a tenth a tithe of our time we become as St. Paul says in the 12th chapter of the letter to the Romans, a living sacrifice, a living victim. We offer our very selves through this action of self-denial and fasting. We are reminded by St. Gregory the Great that a pleasure-loving body leads to sin. If we allow our bodies to enjoy the pleasures in abundance of this world it will lead us to sin but the opposite is also true an afflicted body an afflicted body brings us to seek God's forgiveness this is the instruction of Saint Gregory the Great so let us afflict our bodies that we may find God's pardon fasting helps us to bring the body under control it makes the soul the master of the body. St. Gregory Palamas says that fasting really must always be thought of alongside self-control. He has a, a phrase, St. Gregory Palamas says to us that fasting and self-control are like a, a double wall of defense. A double wall of defense guarding, protecting the peace of the heart that Christ has given us protecting us from sin, from the bombardments, the attacks of temptations and the demons. A double wall of defense. So let us build this double wall of defense. St. John Maximovich says to us that throughout this Lent we are building. We are building to a high place. St. John says with every step, each day goes by, we build, we struggle. We approach God himself his forgiveness we are working our way back to Pascha to the resurrection through this self-denial through this fasting and St. John says to us as we climb the climb is easier as we drop less let, allow more things to fall away when we we shed from us from our hearts anger judgment jealousy, all the passions, our heart becomes lighter to carry and indeed when we begin to eat less the climb becomes easier and we build our way back to God to seek God's forgiveness, to seek God's grace but St. Gregory Palamas of course reinforces the fact that it is not just the body that must be fasting in this Lent we fast in both body and soul St. Gregory Palamas reminds us that it is possible for us all to, to indulge all of our senses. Not just the our eating, but all of our senses. We, we indulge the eyes. We indulge the eyes when we look with, with malice at our neighbour. When we look and we see things that we may find fault in and we judge people. When we look with anger, when we look with lust this is how we indulge the sense of the eyes and we we indulge all of the sense the ears may be indulged through listening to gossip and malice about people reveling in the bad news of other people's misfortune the slander the the types of music that we listen to some types of music can disturb the soul the crudities of the world and our media the inquisitiveness of both our eyes and ears that lead us to seek more and more information that is no good for us, that is none of our business. All of this is indulgence, indulgence of the senses, and we must fast, we must deny ourselves, for the short period at least make an additional effort.
to tithe, to give this time to God. It is no good, it's no good denying one sense and allowing another to run rampant. There is no benefit whatsoever in fasting from food if we do not try to take self-control over our other senses. Do not let them run rampant. Do not let them lead us into sin. True fasting is both body and soul. Because through our fasting, as St. Gregory Palamas says to us, we, we, are, we are calling on God. It is like a cry to God. This self-denial, this, this giving of ourselves to God in this short period is a cry out to the mercy, to the mercy of God. And of course, as so many fathers teach us, if we wish to find compassion from God for our sins, then we must show compassion. If we desire compassion, we must have compassion for others. Let us forgive. Let us show mercy in this Lent. Let us strive to truly forgive our neighbors. We began Lent with Forgiveness Sunday. Let it not be an empty ritual, but let us continue genuinely to seek to forgive. There are people, all of us, every one of us, will find difficult to forgive in our lives. There will be people, if we are honest, we may never truly forgive fully, as we should. But let us be willing to try. Let us try to forgive. Let us be willing to allow forgiveness to come to us for those people. Let us not sit back and secretly hold on to the judgment, to the anger and hatred that we may feel towards others. If we fail, fail to be willing to try to show compassion, how can we ask for compassion from God? And then the first Sunday of Lent itself, we have the triumph of orthodoxy. Saint Ignatius says to us, this triumph is all about the triumph of those things that bring us salvation. But, he warns us, St. Ignatius says to us, it is not for ordinary Christians to go out seeking the heresies of the world to challenge, to combat, because it is enough of a task for each of us to guard our own hearts, our own hearts against heresy. For heresy is a poison. Heresy, false thought, false belief, can rob us of our salvation. It is as immoral as any action. Any action we may perform, false belief, heretical belief, is equally immoral. We will be judged for clinging to false belief. When our false beliefs come into challenge from the faith of the Church, let us recognize where we are wrong. Let us change. Let us accept that we are at fault. Let us humble ourselves before the truth of the church. False belief threatens us. And it is a poison that poisons our very soul, our spiritual being. Reject heresy in every form. This triumph, this triumph of orthodoxy is not a matter of the ego reveling in being right. It is a celebration of everything that God has given to us for our salvation. Everything, the saints, the mysteries, our services, the calendar, all of the traditions of the church, it is there that Christ is to be encountered. This is the great mystery of Christ's self-revelation is ongoing revelation to mankind that Christ himself is encountered in these very traditions that he has given to the church so let us keep to them not in a slavish way but through free will let us give obedience to the tradition of the church let us submit ourselves in humility to all of these traditions let's not turn our back on any of them Christ Christ is manifest in Orthodox tradition because it is the Holy Spirit who has led the Church, has given the Church 
these very traditions. But we must be careful. Let us not, as many people have done, seek after some kind of technique or a system which we believe can conjure up spiritual states. There are many people who, having grown tired of the the intellectual scholastic nature of Western Christianity, have gone seeking after the experiences that many Eastern religions have promised, the pagan faiths of Hinduism and so on, and through these techniques of, of meditation, of yoga, they are promised that they do A and they will experience B. Do this and this will happen. And so they are taught these techniques. We must never, never be tempted to reduce orthodox tradition and the practices, the fasting, the asceticism, the, the prostrations, the prayers of the church. We must never reduce this in our thinking to some kind of empty observance, like an outward technique, that if we perform this ritual, this will happen almost like magic. When St. John Climacus, St. John of the Ladder, explained these 30 stages, these steps in the ascent to God, he didn't set out a technique to follow, to put into practice step by step, do A, do B, do C. He described the encounter of the soul, an obedient soul encountering God and what the soul must do in terms of relinquishing its connection with the world and with sins and temptations, how it must overcome its giving of itself to the world, the flesh, the devil and so on. And in this experience of overcoming the self, we discover then that the heart is enabled to encounter Christ, is enabled to receive the grace of God, but it is no empty technique. It is encounter with the living God himself. And through all these traditions, God is encountered, the revelation of Christ is there in the transformation of our own hearts. It is the change, it is in the, the ability to repent. It is in the ability to forgive and love and show mercy and to worship and love God, truth, in truth, for Christ is truth. Christ is the way, the truth and the life. And in all truth that we encounter, in the living tradition of the church, in the direct encounter and transformation of our hearts, it is there that we encounter Christ. The saints have walked this way before us. Their descriptions of the spiritual life their, their accounts of their struggles on the path which, paths which they have followed are not a set prescription that every one of us must follow to the T. Not every one of us must say, right, I must exactly do this and I must exactly do that because that particular saint did this and that. What they do is describe how their sinful souls have been transformed and perfected in Christ, how the saints have experienced the glory of God, a taste in this world and the perfection and glory in its fullness to come. So let us follow these traditions and recognize that they have given us a road map, yes, to follow, but it is in each of the personal specific circumstances of our lives that we put them into practice, that we, that we try to overcome who we have, are allowing ourselves to be, the sinfulness of our own hearts. Every one of us, the particular temptations, the particular sinfulness, the particular fallen nature of who we are. St. John Climacus, his description of these steps, the, the lives and writings of the saints are there to show us how we can overcome in our lives through obedience, through love, through, through love of God, how we can be transformed. The mystery of Christ's revelation of himself in and through the whole of Orthodox tradition is there to be discovered in each of our lives. Through our freedom, 
and through our obedience to God.